Hello there, how's it going? In this video, we will talk about how to calculate MSD, which is called mean square displacement of an atom and its diffusion coefficient from LAMP's dump file using Ovito and a very simple MATLAB script that can also be rewritten using Python or any programming language of your choice. So let's get started. Okay, the first step is to open Ovito and then you need to drag and drop the dump file onto the Ovito. And you should click File Contains Time Series right here. And once you click File Contains Time Series, Ovito will load, load all, all the time steps. Step, 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 step. We will wait for it to load. All right, so it has almost finished loading. And now I will go to File and I will click Export File. Okay, so I will save this file with name. I'll click save and then I'll click single frame, single file and I will select all. So I'll on this frame and click OK. And this frame will be exported. And now I will go to add modification and select displacement vectors because we want to calculate the displacement magnitude from Ovito. So for that, we need to select the reference that is will be the initial state. So if I click there, I can select this as the reference file and I click OK, open, and it's open. And now, how oh, we have the displacement vector. Now I want to export the files. I want to export all the displacement magnitudes. So what I'm going to say is I'll save it as this underscore mag and I'll click save and I'll select multiple files so that uh, I get all the displacement magnitude. Okay, and I'll unselect all and I'll just select particle type and displacement magnitude. That's all I will need, particle type and displacement magnitude. And then I'll select sequence to get all the frame and I'll click OK. And it begins exporting each frame at a time. All right, so it has finished exporting. Now I can close Ovito. And if I go into the folder that I export, did the export, I will see that the, all the files are here as disk underscore mag dot zero and so on. All right. Now I will go to MATLAB and here's my script for uh, calculating diffusion coefficient and MST. But the first line is just a standard MATLAB line to clear the workspace variable and close any figures if open and CLC will clear the command window. Now MSD equals zero. This is setting the MSD to be the size of the of variable, but but MSD zero is one eighty nine. I'm doing because I have zero to one eighty nine. Okay, so actually it should be one ninety. So zero to one eighty nine. So there are one ninety values, right? So zero to one eighty nine for i. This is a simple for loop, and the file name is sprintf. I'm using this. This is the address. So I need to give this as the address of the folder. So I'm going to quickly do that. And understand that map in sprintf, you should give forward slash, but Windows by default gives backward slash. So we need to convert that. And then disk underscore mag dot percent G comma I. This I will be replaced in place of percent G. That's the thing about sprintf. And so it creates a string and places it in the file name variable. And then we have data. Data equals DLM read, read file name comma space. So file name is the name of the file that is going to be for i equal one. It will be disk underscore mag dot zero one, and for i equal one eighty nine, it will be disk underscore mag dot one eighty nine. Thanks to that S print app. Now file name comma space. What is this space? This is the delimiter. This is called the delimiter how your data is separated. If you see that your data in the dump file is always separated by space, a single space, all right? So that will be your delimiter, that is space. And then the rows to skip and columns to skip. Now, if you see the dump file, you can see the first nine lines are header lines and then the actual data starts. So the first nine lines we will skip. So we will skip nine rows. And then we have the third, sixth line which is displacement so now we get to calculating the displacement so in the data so if i run this up to line five 
you will see that we have data of 254258 by 2 double. So 254258, this is the number of atoms, as you can see. So for each atom, we have its by 2. That is, the first column is the atom type, remember, and the second column is the displacement magnitude of that particular atom. Now, we have all, for all the atoms that their displacement magnitude in this data file. Now, I want to calculate, I want to take the displacements of only the type 1. Okay, so there are many types of atoms. There are actually five types of atoms. If I go to Ovito, you can see that. You can see that if you go to particle types, there are five types of atoms here. Okay, and I want to calculate the MSD for just the type one atom. Okay, so if I want to calculate it for just type one atom, how do I do that? And the dump file has all the atoms. So what I do is I can just take this equal to data and then data colon comma one. What this colon comma one will do is just take all the rows, but the first column of the data variable and then equal equal one. So all the rows of the first column just is being compared to one. That is, this will generate a logical vector that will have ones where the column first column is one and zero otherwise. So this is called logical indexing. What this will do is it will, this comma two, when I write this whole thing in brackets, comma two, what this will do is it will take only those rows where the first column is one and take their column number two. Let me show you what I mean if I step into this step, all right? And if we look at data, now data is 254258, all those. So like type two atom, type three atom, type four atom, for all the atom types, there are this. But this is only 16312 by one. Okay, why is this only 16312 by one? Because there are only 16312 type one atom. That is why this is smaller. And this is also by one. So this is just the displacement magnitude. So it took just the second column of only those that were type one atom. Now the seventh line, we have MSD I plus one. Why are we using I plus one? Because if the loop starts at zero, but in MATLAB, in the array indices start from one, basically in MATLAB. So we use I plus one, there's just a nuance. And we are using sum of displacement square divided by the length of displacement. Now the length of displacement will give me the number of atoms of type one, right? And the sum of displacement square will actually give me the sum for all the atoms, all right, in this time step, for one time step. I've loaded one time step in this loop and then another loop to another time step and so on. Now here is the equation of MSD. If you, this is one, this, the top one is from Wikipedia, but if you look at the simplified bottom one, it's one by N, where N is the number of atoms, sum of all the displacement magnitude squared, all right, for all the atoms, I equals one to n. So that's what we're doing here. We're summing the displacement magnitude squared of all the atoms, and we're dividing it by the length of the displacement, that is the total number of atoms of this type. And now if this loop continues and gets over, then you will see that it the MSD will become a 190 by one double, that is, it will have 190 rows and a single column. So you will have actually the MSD values for every time step. All the 190 time steps, you're getting the MSD value. Okay, so the run is now complete up to this line and you can see MSD is 190 by one. Now, this line just saves this MSD file and this MSD data to an ASCII file. Now, why the first term here is the name of the text file and the second term is the name of the variable and the third term is dash ASCII. You, you can also use dash math to save in MATLAB format, but only MATLAB will be able to read it. But if you read it, give it in dash ASCII, any software can basically read it, okay? So then we need to define the time. Now this is critical because uh, we are going to plot MSD versus time graph and its slope will give us the diffusion coefficient. We've already got MSD, we now need the diffusion coefficient. Now, the time we will start at zero and we will increment it by our time step. So, oh, the 
time step at which dumps have been taken. So if we look at our dump results, first, if you remember the first one was the first one was two zero one triple zero, but the second one is two one one triple zero. So there is ten thousand time step difference in between. So ten one thousand time steps difference. Now multiply that by the time step that we have used in the lamps run. The time step we used in our lamps run was 2.5 femtosecond. I want it in picosecond, so 10 to the power minus 3, e minus 3. Excuse me, e minus 3. So that will be 25. That means I have dump files at 25 picosecond intervals. So zero, starting from zero at 25 picosecond intervals. Now I need to go up to what value? I need to go up to the last time step, the last dump file, this time step. So I have opened the last dump step here. So it's 2091 triple zero. Now 2091 triple zero in that will be, but the first one was not zero, right? But we are saying the first one is zero. So we need to subtract the first one, so which was 2010 triple zero. And that, um, I think I, yeah, two zero one triple zero, two zero one triple zero. So that was the first one. So the difference is one eighty nine into ten to the power four. So we use that one eighty nine into ten to the power four into two point five e minus three. That's the total time that the simulation has run. Okay, then we move on to the next step, which is plot. Because now our time is ready, MSD is ready, we can plot time and MSD. So if we plot, you can see here's the MSD versus the y axis is MSD and the x axis is time in picosecond. We will add the labels later. Now we need to calculate the slope of this curve, but we will neglect the initial part and we will take the slope of this part, the linear part, and that will give us the diffusion coefficient if we multiply that slope by 1 by 6. So for that we need to neglect some initial data. Now there are 190 data here. So I will arbitrarily neglect 63 data, 63 initial data. So if I set neg to 63 and then polyfit, polyfit is a MATLAB function that lets you fit your data to any polynomial equation. So I'm going to fit it to a polynomial equation of degree one that is a straight line. So I'll use one here. And for the x values, I will use x neg to end. So I'm taking the time, but only after 63. So 64 to end, or 63 to end rather. And MSD also neg to end. All right. Then I go there, and then I plot that to see, uh, to get a visual representation of like what part I'm taking to know that I'm that my arbitrary value of choice is a good choice. So yes, I can see that it's a pretty straight, pretty good straight line here. So it's a pretty good choice. Now, D will be P of one by six. Why P of one? Because P is a polyfit result is two values. The first one is the slope and the second one is the intercept. So the first one, so P of one divided by six. So slope divided by six is the D, which is the diffusion coefficient. So I already got the diffusion coefficient as well. Now this is all about just some representation. I will plot the straight line that from which I Got the diffusion coefficient and I'll add the x label y levels and I will have this is a function that I use to decorate my plots basically to make them publication quality and here we go MSD Armstrong square time picosecond and you have your MSD plot and we know the diffusion coefficient as d so if we go in here and type in d that is 1.317 into 10 to the power minus 5 Armstrong square power picos again. That's the diffusion coefficient in this case. That's been it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, if this helped you, leave a like down below and consider subscribing if you want more content like this. I'll probably try to make more of tutorials like this and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye. Oh, hello there, you're still here. The video is over. Okay, maybe you, we want, we should get to know each other then. I'm Mohamed Sajul Bhaktagur. I'm an undergraduate student at Buet, Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology in the de Department of Mechanical Engineering. And I 
I'm trying to make some tutorial videos based on my knowledge of little knowledge of computational research and experience and I also make physics videos for IAL and IGCSs you can also check them out on my uh, YouTube channel here and I make I publish those physics videos almost every day and I will try to publish these tutorials maybe at least once a week or maybe once a week or once a month I'm not sure let's see how it goes this is the first one in a while the last one I made was AutoCAD tutorial maybe a year ago I don't know let's see how it goes stay tuned subscribe and I'll catch you again in the next one peace bye